Hey everyone, it's Dave from Dave's Ohio Barbecue. So maybe you're new to this whole barbecue thing. Maybe you just got yourself a pellet grill or uh, you're, you're smoking on your charcoal grill. You've got a big green egg or an offset, whatever it is. Um, you're probably finding out that if you change too many components of a recipe too quickly, uh, you lose track of what works in a recipe and what doesn't work in a recipe. And it's kind of nerve wracking. So what I've got for you today is I've got my great starting point, my basic barbecue chicken, smoked chicken recipe. From there, you can change it and manipulate it into anything, but this is the perfect place to start. Stick around. All right, so before we get started today, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button too, um, and hit the little bell next to the subscription button so you get notifications anytime I make a new video. So I learned pretty quickly that when I'm barbecuing food or I'm smoking food, if I change too many components of a recipe um, between each time that I cook it, I lose track as what it is that is affecting the flavor, which is affecting the tenderness. Let's say I make some ribs, and the next time I make my ribs, I, I up the paprika, I half the sugar, um, I change the wood from apple wood to oak, um, I cook it at 300 instead of you know 250, and then I really like the results. Well, what about that change? Is it that you know made the better results? Is it the sugar? Is it the paprika? The wood? The temperature? What? So. Whenever you're doing recipes, you really want to change, you want to add and subtract to the recipe slowly. Um, and this recipe that I have for you today is a really, really great starting point for slow smoked barbecue chicken. Um, it's just sort of like a nice neutral recipe. Everyone will love it. it. It tastes great as is. In fact, I tend to use this recipe quite a bit, but from there you can change it. You can make it sweeter. You can make it spicier. You can change the smoke, change the temperature, put a different sauce on it. Whatever it is, um, you can customize this recipe to make it yours. So what makes this recipe so great? Well, it's not too spicy. It's not too um, sugary. You know, it's just kind of right down the middle of the road. But what really, really helps with this is it's the right technique. If you've never smoked chicken before, a lot of times um, the skin on the chicken when you smoke it, it, it comes out like rubber. It's like you're trying to chew through a latex glove. It's not, it's not really good. So not only is this a great recipe for the rub and the treatment of everything, but this is also the proper technique for cooking smoked chicken so that you get that really nice bite through skin and it's super juicy inside uh, without being burnt on the exterior, without being a, a rubber glove. Just really nice, really great method for getting perfect, perfect smoked chicken. The first thing I'm gonna do with this recipe, and, and I tend to do this with all poultry that I make, is I am going to brine the chicken. Now, a lot of people like to like submerge their chicken in um, salted water with sugar, you know, what I call a wet brine, and, and that's fine. But I tend to, it tends to change the texture. To me, it makes it a little bit mushy, and I don't really like mushy chicken. So what I do is I dry brine my chicken the night before. I'm gonna do about, per pound of chicken, I do about maybe a half teaspoon of salt. It's really not that much, but I basically put a nice coating of salt on the meat part of the chicken, and then I also put some on the skin um, side as well, just to kind of help you know flavor that and dry it out a bit. Now, speaking of drying out, once I have it salted, I put it into the refrigerator uncovered. I know that sounds weird. I know it's chicken. Put it in there uncovered because your fridge is a really, really dry environment, and sitting there overnight will really help to dry out that skin. Um, and that's what you're looking for. That's really gonna help to get that bite through quality on the skin and get it out of that rubber glove area. Um, if you dry it out and get rid of some of that moisture, it'll really crisp up nicely when you start cooking it. Um, so like any barbecue recipe, this, this chicken's gonna have a rub on it. And um, this rub, you know, it's not too spicy, like I said, it's not too sweet. To be honest with you, this is the rub recipe I use when I'm having a large group of people over. Um, it's sort of like the rub that pleases everyone. It's, it's just, it's right, right down the middle of the road and everyone seems to enjoy it. One of the tricks I do before I start getting into the, the ingredients of this rub is I like to dry out my brown sugar. If you've ever used brown sugar in a rub before, you know it tends to get clumpy and uh, it's a little bit better to be dried out. So I put it out on a, spread it out on a thin layer on a cookie sheet um, and I put a silicone pad underneath it. If you don't have one of those, you could probably just use tin foil, something like that, just to protect your pan. Um, I turn my oven up to 200 degrees. Once it hits 200 degrees, I turn it off and then I put the brown sugar in with the door cracked and let it just sit in that warm environment. Now, it may stick together a little bit. You can you can like, kind of break it up into back into granules once you take it out. I let it sit there for, you know, 
15, 20 minutes. Um, or you can break it into chunks and put it into your food processor, but either way, you'll get a really nice granule brown sugar that won't clump up. That, that sticky quality, that molasses quality is gone, and it won't clump up when you add it to your rub. So here are the ingredients for my rub. Um, if you miss it, don't worry, I'm gonna put them down below in the comment section as well. So this rub contains a quarter cup of brown sugar, three tablespoons of paprika. If you have smoked paprika, you, you may wanna try that. It adds a little bit more depth to the flavor. Two teaspoons of kosher salt, two tablespoons of freshly ground black pepper, one tablespoon of cayenne pepper, two tablespoons of garlic powder, and two tablespoons of onion powder. All right, so now that we've got this rub all mixed up, um, how do we address the bird? You're not gonna go put this um, on just a whole chicken. That, that won't work. It won't cook evenly. It just, it's just a waste of your time. Two things you can do. You can spatchcock the chicken. That's when you cut out the backbone and you just kind of lay the bird flat, one big bird. What I prefer to do is I cut out the backbone, I do the spatchcock method where I flatten it, but then I take a pair of kitchen shears and I cut right down the breastbone so that I have two halves of chicken. You may have ordered a half chicken uh, in a restaurant before or seen someone order it. That's all it is. The reason I like this more than spatchcocking is um, they're a little smaller um, and they move around easier. You can you can move them around the grill easier, flip them around. You know, it's just easier to handle than some, just a big flat whole bird. Um, so I've got the rub. I'm just going to put a nice, you know, light coating on there. But one of the things I like to do to increase the flavor is I take a little bit of my rub, maybe a couple tablespoons, and I add some uh, oil to it. I'm just using olive oil for this. And I mix it together until it's in like a, a paste. And I take that paste and I rub it underneath the skin. You have to loosen it up with your fingers a little bit, but you're gonna rub some of that underneath the skin. And what that does is it, it flavors the meat a little better. Like I talked, like I said earlier, that chicken skin's like a latex glove. It kind of stops the rub from getting through. So if you go through and you actually like get it directly on the meat, it's really gonna increase your flavor. It's a really, really good trick. So before we get this thing onto the grill, Make sure you hit that subscription button, hit the little bell next to it too. That way you'll get notifications anytime I make a new video. So these chickens are gonna be cooking today for um, about three, three and a half hours total. They don't take that long. Uh, first two hours are gonna be at a low temperature of 250 degrees just to get the smoke to absorb. And then after that, I'm gonna jack the temperature of my smoker up to like 400 and give them mm, anywhere from another 45 minutes to an hour. Basically, you're, you're wanting the internal temperature of, of the thickest part of the thigh to read at about 165 um, on a digital thermometer. Um, and that's how you know it's done. Now, you might have bigger chickens. It might take a little longer. These were smaller chickens to begin with, so they'll cook pretty darn quick. So when these chickens are done, I wrap them up and I put them in a, in a foil pan, actually. Um, and then I'm gonna put that foil pan inside of a cooler and let them sit for about a half hour. You're aiming to be done about a half hour before you wanna eat. Um, some cuts of meats like briskets and things like that, you can keep them in a cooler two, three hours and they're fine. But a chicken doesn't really need that. It just needs, you know, 20 minutes, half hour. Um, but you definitely wanna put it in a cooler so it doesn't really cool off too much. And there you have it, the best starting point recipe for barbecued smoked chicken. Um, I, I always say barbecued and smoked because a lot of times people think of barbecue as just putting some sauce on it and chucking it on the gas grill. But technically barbecue means, anyway. Um, it's really good, it pleases the crowd, and this is where you start. From here, make it spicier, make it sweeter, make it saucier, whatever it is, inject it with something, I don't care. But this is the starting point. Slowly change it from here, and you will end up with the chicken recipe that everyone raves about that is your favorite recipe ever. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to me on social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Dave's Ohio Barbecue. Uh, make sure that you uh, follow me on my Facebook page. Just go to Facebook, type in Dave's Ohio Barbecue. It'll come up there. Then also make sure to subscribe to me down below, please, and hit the bell next to it. That way you'll get notifications anytime I make a new video. I've got a lot of new videos coming out real soon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.